So this video presents to you an example of bending shear force and axial force diagrams, okay? So the first thing to note is the question is asking us just to plot the diagram after calculating our, our internal reactions, okay? So the main focus of this video is to show you how we can cut from the left and cut from the right um, in the same equation. Now, if you understand how to cut from both ends and link them up in the end, you can save so much more time and you're more likely, uh, sorry, you're less likely to make mistakes because you have less calculations to do, okay? So, the, we have a simply supported beam, pin at one end, roll at the other. We have a one kilonewton point, uh, point load, two meters from the pin, and a three kilonewton per meter UDL that starts from the roller and spans four meters out to the left, okay? So, um, first thing we have to note is that how many cuts do we have in this question? So we start on the left hand end, we draw one cut, we keep moving towards the right, now we have a new concentrated load, so we draw a second cut, we keep moving to the right, now we have a UDL, so we have the third cut. In this video, I'll be cutting one and two from the left hand side, and I'll be cutting cut three from the right hand side, okay? Um, first thing to note is that we need to um, work out our reaction forces, so on the pin, we have one vertical restraint here and one horizontal restraint there. Whereas on the roller, we have one horizontal, sorry, one vertical restraint. So now we need to do equilibrium to work out our reaction forces. So first thing we do is the sum of forces in the x direction equals to zero. Okay. Now since H A is the only horizontal reaction force, it's zero kilonewtons immediately. It has nothing to react to. From this. Since the horizontal reaction force is equal to zero, this tells us immediately that our axial force diagram is equal to zero kilonewtons, and you'll see this at the end. Okay, so what do we do next? We can do sum of forces in the horizontal direction, sorry, in the vertical direction, to equal to zero. So we have VA plus VB, which are our reaction forces, VA and VB, minus one, which is we're subtracting the one kilonewton point load, okay? Then minus three times four. Why do we do this? Because it's minus three times the UDL, so minus three, which is the UDL. We multiply by four to convert it into a point load, okay? Because we can't add kilonewtons with kilonewtons per meter, so we're converting the UDL into kilonewtons as well by multiplying by its span, and all of this equals to zero. Rearranging all this, we get VA plus VB equals to 13 kilonewtons, okay? Now, since we have one equation and two unknowns, we need to make use of other equations to work out these unknowns through the use of sum of moments about a certain point to equal to zero. Now, in this case, I chose the sum of points about point B to equal zero. Now, where is point B? Point B is this one over here, right? So, first of all, we have minus VA times 8. So, we have this VA is over here, the lever arm is 8, because 2 plus 2 plus 4 gives us 8, it's causing a clockwise moment, so it's a negative, so we have minus VA times 8, plus 1 times 6, 1 is the 1 kilonewton point load over here, it has a span of 6, sorry, it has a lever arm of 6 meters away from this point B over here, and it causes a anti-clockwise motion, as you can see the rotation of the paper, okay, so 1 times 6, plus... 3 times 4 times 2. Now pay attention to this point. What is 3 times 4 times 2? Okay, so we've got the UDL over here. This one over here. It is 3 represents the UDL. We multiply this by 4 to convert it into a point load. So 3 times 4, which gives us 12. This gives us a 12 kilonewton point load exactly in the center of the UDL. Okay, if it's exactly in the center of the UDL, then it's going to be 2 meters away from the roller. So therefore, the lever arm is 2 meters, so we multiply that by 2. So we have plus 3 times 4 times 2 to equal 0. This Rearranging all this, we see that VA is equal to 3.75 kilonewtons, bearing in mind that the, hor the vertical reaction, VB, has no effect as a moment on the roller because it's in the line of sight. There's no lever arm. Okay. So now that we've worked out our reaction force VA to equal 3.75 kilonewtons, we can make use of the following equation, VA plus VB is equal to 13 kilonewtons. Um, substituting into this, we work out that our 
the reaction force is 9.25 kilonewtons. Okay, so now we've established equilibrium and we've worked out our reaction forces. Next, we come to do to explain the sign convention for the following question. Okay, when cutting from the left, we do the following. Just a reminder that cutting from the left, our shear force is pointing down. Our moment is anti-clockwise. Our axial force is pointing out to the right. Okay. Whereas when we're cutting from the right, okay, our axial force is pointing to the left. Our moment is a clockwise moment, and our shear force points up. So make sure you understand the following sound convention and keep it in mind because we're using this sound convention for the rest of the course. Okay. And this is a consistent sound convention, most importantly. Now, moving on, we have to calculate our cuts. So we have cut 1 over here, which starts at the pin and ends just before the following 1 kN point load. So cut 1 is right here. And the span is 0 is less than x is less than 2. Why is the span 0 is less than x is less than 2? Well, because simply if we're cutting from the left, technically the pin is the 0 marker and it ends just before um, the point load, so the extremities are from 0 out to 2 meters, okay? And we're cutting this from the left. So if we just draw our cut, as you can see, we have a 3.75 kN reaction force by the pin, and we have our following internal reactions. So we do sum of equilibriums to work out the internal reaction forces. So the sum of forces in the horizontal is equal to 0. This gives us N is equal to 0 kN, because N is the only horizontal uh, axial force, okay? Then we have sum of forces in the y direction to equal to zero. So we have minus v since it's pointing down, which is the shear force, plus 3.75 since it's pointing up equals to zero. This gives us a shear of 3.75 kilonewtons um, in cut one, okay? So now next we need to work out our moment. So we do sum of moments about point b to equal zero. This is point b over here. So we have m which is the anti-clockwise moment over here, m minus 3.75 times x is equal to 0. What, what, what is minus 3.75 times x? What is this? So it's basically the following reaction force, and the lever arm is x. So when we draw cuts, we always draw the whole cut as a function of x. So this is one thing you should also understand. So rearranging this, we find that our moment is equal to 3.75 x. So it's a function of x. Now, since it's a function of x, we need to substitute our extremities to work out um, the different magnitudes of the moment across the following cut. So we have to substitute 0 and 2. Okay? So when x is equal to 0, which is above the pin over here, m is equal to 0 kilonewton meters, and when x is equal to 2, which is just before the concentrated point load, where the cut ends, we have a moment of 7.5 kilonewton meters. So that's cut 1 down. Next we have cut 2, also I'm cutting from the left, right, but in this case, our cut 2 is technically, starts from the point load and ends just before the UDL, so the span is from 2 meters out to 4 meters if we're cutting from the left, but when we draw a cut, we need to include cut 1 as well, okay, but the extremities are from 2 out to 4 meters, and the reason being we already calculated the internal reactions over here so we don't need to consider them however we need to draw them because they can affect cut 2 okay so the following is cut 2 from here the pin out to the concentrated point load of 1 kN is known to be 2 meters and the whole thing is a function of x then technically from 1 kN to point B the length is x minus 2 meters okay so Let's do equilibrium to work out our internal reaction forces. Sum of forces in the x direction is to equal zero. Since n, the axial force, is the only horizontal reaction force, n is equal to zero kilonewtons. Next we do sum of forces about the y direction, which is the vertical, to equal zero. So we have minus v, this one, plus 3.75, because it's pointing up, minus one, because it's pointing down, is equal to zero. This gives us a shear force of 2.75 kilonewtons. Next, we have to do sum of moments about point B is equal to zero. Okay, where is point B? 
point B is right here and I always take it I always choose my point B as the point just before the in, just at the internal reactions where we're cutting it okay so we have M which is our um, unknown moment here minus 3.75 times X so this is the 3.75 kilonewtons over here with a lever arm of X and it's causing an, a clockwise moment about point B so it's negative plus 1 as you can see here 1 times x minus 2 equals 0 what is this this is um, the moment caused by the po concentrated point load here so 1 kilonewton times its lever arm which is from here to here and we said that this is x minus 2 and it causes an anti-clockwise so it's a positive and this all equals to 0 so this gives us an equation of moment which is equal to 3.75 x minus x minus 2 now since the moment is a function of x we need to substitute our extremities okay as we did in cut 2 as in cut 1 excuse me so our extremities are 2 and 4 right so when x is equal to 2 we substitute into this equation we see that our moment is equal to 7.5 kilonewton meters and when x is equal to 4 substituting into this equation we see that our moment is equal to 13 kilonewton meters now due to time limits i'll continue the video and i'll continue the following question in the next video thank you